Good morning, Woodlawn family. How are you all doing this morning? 7.30 a.m. on this beautiful Wednesday morning. Uh, Y'all doing good? Everybody have your coffee? What are you drinking this morning? Uh, are you drinking coffee? Are you drinking tea? Are you eating? Well, yeah, anyways. <laughs> You're not, we're fasting. We're not eating donuts, right? So we're not doing that this, uh, this month. But uh, good to see everybody. There is Chris Ferguson. Uh, Dave and Angie Brown are on with us this morning. Tammy Guybe and Rick. Good to see you, Marty and Kathy James. Melissa Davis, how in the world are you? There's Mary DiLoretto. Good to see you this morning. Terry Funk, how in the world are you? There's Ed Evans. Good to see you, my brother. Ellen Rowe, all kinds of people on bright and early this morning. There's Patch. Patch is drinking tea this morning. I had coffee. Uh, I get up so early on Wednesdays, I may need another cup when this is all over. But uh, hey, real quick. Um, how many of you enjoyed the snow that we got Sunday night into Monday, huh? What do you think? Uh, does anybody know how much snow we actually ended up with? Uh, I don't really know. All I know is that my, my yard's kind of big, so the snow drifts a little bit, and I have this old snowblower. I have this snowblower that a guy when I was in Fremont gave to me, and it's this old like Alice Chalmers uh, <laughs> snowblower. It's, I don't know, it's probably 30 years old, but. The thing is a beast. It's got like chains on the tires. Zach, you should see my snowblower. It's pretty sweet. Um, the only problem is to start it, I have to pull it 800 times, uh, but I got it going. But it's got like a 24 inch mouth. And Zach, I don't know, did you have drifts at your house? Yes. Like my snowblower, like when I was like trying to go, there was a couple points where it was actually going over the top of the snowblower. I couldn't believe it. And man, my muscles are sore today. Uh, David Angie Brown said they had about 15 inches in Alliance. Man, that was incredible. Uh, anybody other, what, what we got in Canton here? Kind of curious to see. Zach, do you know how many inches we had? We, we over by our place, we had, it was like 14 inches. When we okay. Z Zach said he measured 14 inches at his house. Un unbelievable. How many of you guys like the snow? You know, for me, um, I don't like the snow like all year round, but I think if it's going to snow, isn't it kind of fun to get snowed in like once in a while? Like just to get snowed in. That was that was a great, uh, it was a kind of a great day. Other than being three hours out snow blowing my driveway, I'm still <laughs> sore today. Oh my gosh, gosh. Um, Nancy Gillingham said 19 inches. Wow. Unbelievable. Um, <laughs> Emily Henning, I love what Emily Henning said. She said she likes the snow because it gives cold a purpose. <laughs> Josh and Emily are from the great state of Michigan. They know what snow is all about. Keith Nutter says, yes, he likes the snow. Uh, but anyways, it's good to see all of you this morning. Good to have you on with us. A lot of cool things happening here at the church. Um, Community groups are up and going. Well, well, they haven't started yet, but the, all the signups are up. The website's up. Hopefully, uh, you're taking a step of faith this year and signing up for a group. We're so blessed. We had some new leaders step up this semester. So we have somewhere around 30 groups this semester, which we're really, really uh, pumped about. We're pretty excited about that. Because as a pastor, when I know people are in, in community groups, uh, I know they're being cared for. I know they're in community. I know they're growing. How many of you know discipleship is relationally based? We got to have relationships in order to really grow. And then also real quick, I'm also excited because uh, Brittany told me yesterday that we have upwards of about 100, maybe a little bit more, uh, more than 100 people that have re-signed up or signed up for the first time for this year's prayer force. I am pumped. Way to go, Woodlawn. We're having our first prayer gathering this coming Tuesday on the 25th at 7 o'clock. We're going to gather for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. I'll be sharing some stuff with uh, you guys about this new year and praying about some exciting things. So uh, looking forward to that time together on Tuesday night. And when we talk about faith, um, you know, I really feel like, and I've been sharing this, if you've been uh, at church the last couple of weeks or you've been tuning in, uh, back in 2021, I, I really felt like the, there was one word I had in my spirit for 2021. And I felt like the Lord was telling us to focus, that 2021 was a, a, a year for you and I to focus, to focus on Christ. So you may remember we spent the first, um, was it seven months, I believe, of the year just focusing on Christ and the book of Matthew. And we just walked through that. 
And what a what a fruitful, powerful time that was. It was life changing. I had so many good responses from people. And then uh, this year, however, I, I feel like the Lord has put a word in my spirit, and it's the word faith. Um, that this is a year of faith. This is a year for us to believe God for more. Uh, this is a year that, that God is going to be calling some of us, maybe some of you that are watching today, to take steps of faith. Maybe in your personal life, in, in ministry, uh, God may be calling us as a church to take some steps of faith this year. And so that being said, I really feel like this is a year to focus on faith. And in doing that, we are uh, in, a, in the book of Joshua, one of my favorite books of the Old Testament. That's a book, too, we're just going to be in for a little while as we learn and we glean from it, learning about faith. How many of you know Joshua was the one who took the people of Israel across the Jordan River and into all that God had for them? And I want to tell you what, it took a lot of faith for him to do that. It took a lot of faith from the leaders of Israel, the people of Israel. Uh, sometimes if we're going to get unstuck in life, you know, the Israelites had been stuck for 40 years in the wilderness, but Joshua took them in. And sometimes for you and I to get from where we are now to where God wants us to be in whatever area of life that is, sometimes, oftentimes, it requires you and I taking some steps of faith. And when you think about it, faith is one of the most important things as believers that we have, right? I mean, faith is what brings our salvation, right? Um, we're not saved by our works, but we're saved by God's grace through what? Through our faith. When we put our faith in what Christ did for us, at that moment, salvation happens in our lives. Uh, the Bible goes on to say in Hebrews 11 that it's faith is how you and I please God. We all want to please God, right? Uh, if you and I want to please God, in order for us to please God, it requires faith. Without faith, it's impossible, the Bible says, to please Him. And faith ultimately takes us into God's best. So that being said this morning, for a few minutes, what I want to look at is I want to look uh, at the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 11. Um, the last time I was with you two weeks ago, uh, we were looking at the book of Hebrews, uh, this great faith chapter. And uh, what I want to do and kind of talk to you about briefly this morning is I want to talk to you about stepping out in faith. Uh, this past week, uh, if you want to go ahead and get your Bibles open to he uh, Hebrews 11, this last week in my message, we talked about Rahab and how Rahab was this Gentile woman. She was actually a prostitute. You, and you see this contrast between her and the first generation of the Israelites. The first generation of Israelites that came out of the uh, out of Egypt, out of slavery, uh, they saw God do all of these incredible miracles. They even ate the manna that God rained out of heaven every single day of their lives. And yet when God told them to obey, they didn't have the faith to obey him. And yet they had seen all the things that God had done. And then you see Rahab, who was this Gentile who did not see all the things that God had done, only heard about them she believed in God and she put action to her faith and she hid the spies and her act of faith, her step of faith brought salvation to her entire family. In fact, she's listed um, in this hall of faith. She's also listed in James, as we looked at, um, that faith without works is dead. If I have faith, but I never put any action to my faith, do I really have faith was the question that uh, James is using in that scripture. So we're going to look at Abraham for a few minutes today. One of my, my favorite stories in the Hall of Faith stories. Abraham, uh, incredible man. He is known as the father of our faith. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and look at one verse today. I like to keep it quick and simple with you here today. Let's look at um, Hebrews uh, 11 verse 8. Look what the Bible says. It says, by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place, he would later receive as his inheritance obeyed and went, notice the last part, even though he did not know where he was going. So the idea is, is that Abraham at 75 years of age was called by God to leave all the comforts of home, all the comforts that he know, knew to go to a land that God would ultimately show him. He didn't even know exactly where he was going to end up, but by faith he went, even though he did not know where he was going. You know, I, I was thinking about life and, you know, life's uh, one of those things that, that we all sometimes are, are challenged with. One of the big challenges of life is regrets that we deal with. I think as we look back over our lives, I think we all have some regrets of, of maybe some things that we did that maybe we wish we hadn't have done. 
But then I think life is also full of regrets where there was maybe opportunities that we had that we didn't act on. In fact, somebody years ago did a study on regrets. And what they said was that at the end of the day, at the end of people's lives, the regrets that they had the most were not for things that they did that didn't work out, maybe steps of faith that they took that didn't work out but for all of the what ifs, for all of the things that they could have done, you know, those woulda, coulda, shoulda, you know, what would have happened if we would have done that? You know, a lot of times we have regrets and we look back over life and it's like, man, it's, it's like, we just played it a little bit too safe. In fact, um, you know, speaking of playing it too safe, there was a man, uh, an author by the name of Scott Dudley, and he wrote something that I thought makes a really good point. While I don't agree with every little thing he says here, I think it makes a grander point that I think all of us need to listen to. And he talked about playing it safe. This is what he said. He said, over the last 30 years, we have created the most risk adverse society in history. We are the most seat belted, bike helmeted, airbag, knee pad wearing, private schooled, gluten freed, hand sanitized, peanut avoiding, sunscreen lathering, hyper-insured, massively medicated, password-protected, valet-barked, security system, inoculated generation in history, and all it's done is make everyone more afraid of everything. (laughs) And while I don't agree with all of his statements there, I think the grander point was that sometimes we just play it so safe that in life we play it too safe that maybe there's some times in life that we're not operating in faith. Now, when I say that, that doesn't mean we make foolish decisions as well. That doesn't mean that we just take risks for risk's sake and we don't have proper calculations and we don't really seek God and go to the word and get counsel and wait for God's timing. (laughs) You know, I joked with the 11 o'clock service this week. I'm like, don't hear this message and go out and quit your job tomorrow. And then it doesn't work out and blame it on Pastor Matt. So, cause sometimes, you know, you can, you can get hasty and you can make foolish decisions. And that's not what I'm talking about today. But I, I think oftentimes it's our inordinate desire for safety that ends up stunting our faith. Let me say that again. Oftentimes it's our inordinate desire for safety that ends up stunting our faith. How many of you know, our faith was meant to grow. My, my hope is your pastor is that when you go to be with Jesus Christ or after you've spent a season of time, hopefully a long one, with our church, that your faith grows. That you have, I hope today, you have more faith today to believe God than you had when you were younger. And and that's my hope because faith is like a muscle though. Somebody wiser said, in fact, my muscles. Zach, are you sore from shoveling the other day? (laughs) Zach says his lower left back hurts so bad. Is anyone else sore? Could I hear from you today? Anybody else other than me sore from (laughs) digging yourself out of the snow? Or maybe you're sore because you were sledding and (laughs) you went down some hills you shouldn't have done. But um, where, oh yeah, Uh, faith is like a muscle, right? In order for your muscles to get stronger and for your muscles to grow, what do you have to do? You have to work them. Now, when you work them, they get a little bit sore, but when when they grow back, what? They're more, they're stronger. And that's the same way with our faith. In order for your faith to grow, you can't just believe. There comes a point in time when you have to act. You know, for some of you uh, that are tuned in this morning, maybe it's serving. Maybe God's calling you from just being an attender of church to taking some steps of faith and begin using your gifts and talents. Maybe it's going through growth track. For others, maybe it's starting a small group, a life group. Um, uh, For others, maybe God put a dream in your heart and now it's time to start taking some of those steps. For others watching today, maybe God's challenging you to share your faith with somebody, somebody at work or a, or a, a neighbor or a family member or to invite somebody to church. For others, maybe it's, you know, God's calling you to give, to be, to be a tither, to be a giver, to, to give sacrificially to a cause, to step out of faith, in faith in, in some area of your life. And, and I know sometimes when we get ready to do that and we feel God calling us, You know, we hear that voice and sometimes that voice can be good, but sometimes that voice can be be, be bad. And here's that voice. It might not be safe. It might not be safe. You know, I I heard uh, Tommy Barnett, who's a a great pastor. I think he's in his 80s now. I think he's still doing ministry. Uh, Built a great church in Phoenix, Arizona, what, 40, 40 some years ago. And he quoted, I was reading one of his books, and he, reco- he quoted uh, a quote from John a., author John A. Shedd, who said this, a ship is safe at harbor, but that's not what ships were built for. Isn't that good? Yeah, a ship is safe in the harbor, 
But that's not what a ship was built for. A ship was to go out on the high seas and go out there and do what it was built to do. You know, and I have some friends, in fact, this year that have taken some steps of faith. I, I, have, a, I have a friend that I remember last year we were sitting, um, I met him for coffee one day and we we're sitting out when the weather was nice <laughs> and we're sitting outside and uh, he had an opportunity to take a new position in his career. And uh, the interesting thing was um, he had a really great job. In fact, he was he was in a, a software company that was, you know, was kind of going through some ups and downs, but he had a really good position. The, the company was actually uh, restructuring their company and they were looking at putting him into a lead role. But just about that time, he had gotten another call from somebody to join a team of people in a complete new startup company. And he was weighing the pros and cons and the job that he was in, just there were some setbacks to it. He wasn't completely happy in that position, even though it was a safe place to be because it would have paid him well. And uh, when, you know, when you're, you're taking care of your home, that's important. But yet the other, the other career opportunity that he had, well, it, it came with more risk. It was more of a startup, but the upside uh, when it worked out would have been much better. Plus he would have been working in a better atmosphere with better people, more ministry opportunities would have come out of it. And I remember sitting there talking with him and he was still kind of weighing out. He was doing a wise thing. He was getting some counsel. We were talking and he's, you know, kind of weighing the pros and cons. And I, and I, I could tell that he was feeling like he needed to step out in faith. And his wife was even encouraging him as he prayed with his wife that this was the right thing to do. And I, I quoted that scripture <clears throat> and he said, Pastor, you're not going to believe it. He said that, that I, not the, 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 the scripture, but the quote, a, a, a ship is safe at harbor, but that's not what a ship was uh, designed to do. He actually said the day before his wife had saw that quote in a devotional and she'd handed it to him. And then here I go sharing that same thing. So needless to say, he took the step of faith and I see God doing some cool things in his life. And, and so there, there's a time to do that. And Abraham obviously was a man who, who didn't play it safe. Um, he heard from God and he stepped out. And he was in a town when the Bible opens up this particular story in the book of Genesis chapter 12. Um, he was living in Ur of the, the Chaldeans, which would have been uh, Mesopotamia, which uh, some of you read about or learned about when you were in high school. Uh, that was the cradle of civilization. It was a great place. It was one of the first places where people began to gather together in society. So he was living in a society where he was well cared for, like everything was good. And here he was at 75 years of age. God comes to him and says, Abraham, I want you to leave. I want you to leave all the comforts of your, this, this uh, place you're living in and, and all the, the wealth. And I want you to leave it all. And I want you to go to a place that I will show you. So here comes God. God called, he knows he'd heard from God, but God's telling him at 75 years of age to leave all the comforts of home and the life that he had built to go and follow after God. And I love what the Bible says in our scripture today in Hebrews 11, 8, it says, by faith, when called to go to a place that he would later receive as his inheritance, he obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. So you look at that. It's not that he didn't have any other options. I mean, he was doing well. He had an established life. He was already wealthy. He had, he had a wife and a family to leave for a sketchy future. I mean, and think about that. Uh, you know, he had no precise de destination. He had no map or GPS of where he was going. He had no travel agency, no insurance, you know, uh, no written contract that everything was going to be perfect. You know, he was wealthy. He could have been robbed by people being out there, but yet he took a step of faith. And to be honest with you, he took that step of faith. And because he did, we've all been blessed by Abraham, right? Because when he stepped out, that began the, the nation of Israel, who again then the Messiah Jesus came through and now we're all blessed today. And here's the promise that he had from Genesis 12. This is what God said. He said, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the, notice this, what he says right here. And all the people of the earth shall be blessed. And then verse four just simply says this. Uh, Genesis 12, 4. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him. So here's Abraham and God says, listen, I, I'm going to, I'm going to have you leave everything, but know this, that when you leave to go, I'm going to bless you. 
And you know what's cool about that is when you and I walk by faith, not when we walk by foolishness and we get ahead of God and we make messes out of life, but when we know we've heard from the Lord, when you and I step out in faith, God will always bless us. But here's the important thing. It's not always just about us. Sure, God will bless you and sure your faith will grow and sure your relationship with God will, will grow because you're watching God be faithful to all the things that he promised you. But what's probably most important about that is that other people are blessed. When you step into ministry, people are blessed. When, when you have the faith to give and to trust God and to help people, people are blessed. When you step out in an area of your life and God blesses you, now you're able to bless other people. When you walk into what God has for you, there's always people. Anytime God calls you to something, maybe it's a job or a place or a city or whatever it is, there's always a people God is calling you to. In fact, that's what Christy and I did in 2012 when we stepped away from our church in, in Fremont. That was a very hard thing for us. We didn't know exactly where we were going to end up, but we knew God was calling us to a people. And can I tell you, almost eight and a half, nine years later, I am so glad that we said yes and we followed God because we have been here the last eight and a half, nine years, and I've seen God do so much in the lives of people, and my faith has grown. So let me leave it with a couple questions here today, all right? Here's the thing. Um, are you, number one, seeking God's will deliberately and passionately? And thank you for all the hearts. I see a bunch of <laughs> hearts flying right now. We're gl really glad that God brought us here, even though we missed the precious people that we had an opportunity to pastor for those years. But let me ask, are you seeking God's will deliberately and passionately? Like, are you living to fulfill God's will for your life? Because that's ultimately what Abraham did. Um, if God were to call you right now to leave your comfort zone, how would you respond? If God were to call you right now to leave the comforts of whatever, maybe it's a position, whatever it is, if God were to call you, would you do it? And then lastly, are you obeying God right now where you are? Um, you know, th that's kind of what I, I'd left you with on, um, on Sunday. Is there a step of faith that God is calling you to right now in your life? Might be a small step of faith, like sharing your faith, inviting somebody to church, getting involved in ministry. It could be a, a bigger life decision. Is God calling you right now? Is there an area of your life that God's been calling you to obey that you haven't stepped out to do yet? Well, let me tell you, from uh, decades of serving God, anytime I heard from the Lord, anytime I followed God's direction and took a step of faith, I was never sorry that I did. So I hope that this is a year that you will walk by faith at a greater level. I hope this is a year that our church will walk by faith because I really believe that God's got so much more for us. I just believe there's more lives God wants to touch. There's, there's more people God wants us to impact here and in the greater Canton area and even through missions and the things that we do far and far beyond. But I believe that there's so much more. God wants to use us all. So. Uh, let's be challenged this year. Let's have faith and believe God. Let me pray for you this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time together today. And Lord, I thank you for, Lord, this year, a year of faith. Lord, I pray for everyone that's watching this devotional right now or will watch it later, that you will help all of us to walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, that when you call us to obey you or to take a step of faith in any area of our life, that this year would be the year that we say yes God, I'll do what you call me to do. For that person right now that's feeling your tug, feeling your pull, that you would give them the faith today to obey, knowing that when you do, not only are we blessed, but others are blessed as well. In Jesus' name and amen. Well, God bless you. I want to thank you for being with us this morning. It's good to be back with you on our morning devos. I look uh, forward to seeing you back uh, next uh, Wednesday morning as well. But I hope that you will be back in church this weekend. We hope to see you as we're continuing on uh, this series called Unstuck, the study of Joshua stepping forward in faith. We look forward to seeing you this weekend. If you can't be here in person, we certainly look forward to seeing you online. We love you. God bless.